This is the moment that a police officer was filmed being pulled to the ground and beaten at the US Capitol on January 6th. A tall, shaggy-haired man wearing a camouflage-style coat can be seen carrying a flagpole bearing the US flag and smashing it repeatedly down into the space where the police officer had just been dragged. I was reporting outside the US Capitol on January 6th, and I've discovered that I spoke to this man in the minutes after he allegedly beat the policeman on the ground. He had shocking things to say. Everybody in there is a treasonous traitor. Death is the remedy. They that is the only remedy they get. The man is now being sought by detectives and federal charges are pending against him. I've also identified the police officer who was attacked. The violent scenes that unfolded at the Capitol on January 6th shocked America and they have prompted one of the largest investigations ever undertaken by the FBI. Investigators are trawling through hours of footage to identify and arrest the perpetrators. The footage of the police officer being attacked has become one of the most widely shared pieces of footage from the violence, with more than two and a half million views online. Cross-referencing the footage with what I filmed on the day when I was speaking to various rioters, I've discovered that I spoke to this man around 25 minutes after he had allegedly assaulted the police officer. It is understood that the footage was taken at 4.27pm. I spoke with him at 4.53pm. My video provides an insight into the suspected attacker's mindset at the time. Here were his shocking words in which he called law enforcement traitors and said they should be killed. That entire building is filled with treasonous traitors. Yes, sir. Death is the only remedy for what's in that building. Well, you need to stand up over. and you need your scrap. Everybody in there is a treasonous traitor. Every single one of those Capitol law enforcement officers, death is the remedy. They that is the only their remedy own. they get. Cybersecurity experts working to identify the suspect say the footage could prove to be the critical piece of evidence that leads to identifying him. Through my reporting, I've also been able to identify the police officer who was assaulted. He's Michael Fanone, a more than 18-year veteran of the DC police force. He was admitted to hospital following the incident, but has since been released. Washington DC's Metropolitan Police Department said federal charges were pending against the individual relating to the insurrection at the Capitol and an assault on a police officer. Officials have offered a $1,000 reward for information that leads to the arrest and indictment of the individual responsible for the attack. Listen, th their lives were in danger. <laughs> one of them, while he's on the ground, heard one of the riders say, kill him with his own gun. Now, one of those officers is still suffering from the effects of a mild heart attack after these violent rioters tased him several times, stripped him of his gear. CNN Shimon Prokopez joins us now from Washington. Uh, listen, Shimon, as we get more details, both from the videos and from these firsthand accounts, this is becoming much worse. I mean, the level of violence, but specifically the violence targeting uniformed members of the law, law enforcement. Yeah, it, it truly is, Jim. And when you hear these officers speak and for the first time, we've seen the videos, we've seen the pictures of them being violently, viciously attacked inside the Capitol. But when you listen to them talk about what they went through, it paints a much more terrifying picture. USA! 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 In last week's deadly coup attempt at the U.S. Capitol, a pro-Trump mob swarmed the building outnumbering and battling police officers fighting to defend it. It was difficult to uh, to offer any resistance when you're only about 30 guys going up against 15,000. D.C. Metro Police Officer Michael Fanone was in this group of officers at the west front entrance of the Capitol as rioters forced their way in. They eventually push him out into the crowd where Fanone says he was tasered several times. While trapped, the 40-year-old says he thought about using his gun to fight back. Some guys started getting a hold of my gun, and uh, they were screaming out, um, you know, kill him with his own gun. Um, at that point, you know, it was just like self-preservation. Um, you know, how do I survive this situation? And I thought about, you know, using deadly force. I thought about shooting people. Um, and then I, I just came to the conclusion that, 
you know, if I was to do that, you know, I might get a few, but I'm not going to take everybody, and uh, they'll probably take my gun away from me, and that would definitely give them the justification that they were looking for to kill me uh, if they already didn't have made that up in their minds. Uh, so the other option I thought of was, you know, try to appeal to somebody's humanity. Um, and I, I just remember yelling out that I have kids, and uh, it seemed to work. Um, some people in the crowd started to encircle me and try to offer me some level of protection. A lot of people have asked me, you know, my thoughts on uh, the individuals in the crowd that, um, you know, that helped me uh, or, or tried to offer some assistance. Uh, and I, I think kind of the conclusion I've come to is like, you know, thank you. For being there. This horrifying video shows the moment the violent mob storms into a tunnel of the building, <laughs> trapping and crushing DC Metro police officer Daniel Hodges by a door. There was a guy ripping my mask off, and he uh, he was he was able to rip away my baton and beat me with it, and um, you know he was practically foaming at the mouth. <laughs> so just these people were true believers in the worst way. Mm -hmm. When things were looking bad, you know, obviously I was calling out for all I was worth and um, an officer behind me was able to get give me enough room to pull me out of there and they, they brought me to the rear so I was able to uh, execrate myself. Hodges miraculously leaving the attack without any major injuries saying he was shocked. Some rioters thought authorities would be on their side. The cognitive dissonance and the, uh, the zealotry of these people is unreal. You know, they were waving the thin blue line flag and telling us, you know, we're not your enemies while they were attacking us and, uh, you know, kill one of us. Some of them felt like, like that we would be eat quick, fat, like, some of them felt like we would be fast friends because they, they've been, so many of them have been vocal or at least virtue signaling their support for the police over the past year. They said, they say things like, you know, we've been supporting you through all this Black Lives Matter stuff, you should have our back. And uh, they felt like entitled. They felt like they would just walk up there and tell us that they're here to uh, take back Congress and we would agree with them and we'd walk in hand in hand and just take over the nation. But obviously that did not, that was not the case and it will never be the case. The insurrectionists even using unusual means in their efforts to break into the most secure areas of the U.S. Capitol building. The individuals were pushing, shoving officers, hitting officers. Um, they were spraying us with what we were are calling bear, it's essentially bear mace. It was two to three hours of you know, heroism and bravery from these officers. I mean, the 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 violence that they, you know, were, I, I mean, they were getting hit with metal objects, metal poles. I remember seeing pitchforks. Um, you know, they're getting sprayed, knocked down. And I remember, you know, just reinforcements, just officers pulling officers back to, to, to heal up and, and, you know, them stepping in to get to the front line. And then they go down and then, you know, more officers step in. And what you hear that officer there describing is exactly what law enforcement officials have been telling us. It is the work of the MPD, the D.C. police, who, got, who were called in as reinforcement when the Capitol Police were overwhelmed, is what saved lives. The lawmakers, they were able to move lawmakers out of harm's way because of the battle that the D.C. police were fighting. It gave the Capitol Police time to move some of our lawmakers, some of the leaders of this country, out of harm's way.